Dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Pathophysiology of the Living Dead. I'm Spooky Bill and today we're going to talk a little more about the immune response elicited when bitten by a zombie. Now, if you remember in episode 3, we briefly touched on phagocytes and phagocytosis. Well, we're going to go a little more into that today. Now, a phagocyte is a cell that envelops and digests or renders harmless uh, the pathogen. In a way, it's like... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. How can it be stopped? Mob hysteria sweeps one city. Before long, the world could fall before the blood-curdling threat of the Bob. Starring Steve McQueen and a cast of exciting young people. And I say this because, well, if you watch this video here of a neutrophil, a neutrophil which is a white blood cell, a macrophage, and a macrophage being a type of phagocyte, uh, chasing a staphylococci bacteria among a hodgepodge of red blood cells. Um, well, let's roll it and watch. Pretty cool, right? I know. but. Phagocytes don't just chase the invaders, some send out long pseudopodia, which are arms that capture the invaders and bring them in. One of my favorite phagocytes is the dendritic cell, and these are found in tissues that have contact with the outside environment, nose, lungs, intestines, etc. And they send out these little crafty and branch-like tentacles that capture the invader and, and draw it in. Well, watch this video. So what exactly happens here? Well, receptors on the phagocyte are attracted to specific carbohydrates on the microbial cell wall, and it draws it near. Once it's near, it's enveloped. Once it's enveloped, a sac is formed around it, and this is called a phagosome. Now, at this point, a lysosome, which is part of the cell that is contains a variety of digestive enzymes in a highly acidic solution comes in contact with the phagosome and the two sacs fuse to become one which is called a phagolysosome and it's at this point that the digestive enzymes break down the pathogen hopefully and in this process nitric oxide, hydrogen peroxide and other oxygen derivatives are formed now after this is broken down the phagocyte either spits out the end products or uses it for its own metabolism. But those digestive enzymes, cytokines, which are protein messengers and oxygen derivatives, are also released outside the cell where they can kill the pathogen without swallowing it. However, prolonged exposure to this is destructive to tissue cells. Now, I said in episode 3 that I wasn't going to discuss wound healing, that it was a waste of time, and I still hold this to be true. However, 
In the case of zombie vita, the question arises that if they're still alive, wouldn't biologically their wounds still heal? Now I say no, and this is because, well, depending on who you ask, there are three to four phases of wound healing, and these phases are sequential, meaning phase two can't start until phase one is complete. Now, chronic wounds are wounds that are stuck in one of these phases. This usually happens in inflammation. The body recognizes that the pathogen is still present, or debris is still present, now, which is most likely the case because, one, the zombie pathogen, it's got to be pretty virulent. It's got to be able to withstand a lot. Um, two, zombies really don't have enough sense to clean out their wounds. Now, the, the body recognizes that this infection is still present. It keeps sending phagocytes to the area. The phagocytes keep releasing enzymes, cytokines, oxygen derivatives, which are destroying the tissues of the body even more. And eventually the tissue becomes necrotic or dies. But that's another episode. So based on what we know about phagocytes, how can the zombie pathogen survive? It looks pretty efficient, doesn't it? Well, how does anybody get sick, right? There are loopholes. Now, if you remember, there's a 30 to 60 minute window before neutrophils show up, and this further supports the case of rapid replication quickly overcoming the host. Some pathogens will outright kill the phagocyte by secreting their own chemicals. Bacteria that has a thick gelatinous capsule can avoid engulfment. Some pathogens can avoid contact by interfering with immune response and suppressing chemotaxis, which is how phagocytes travel to the infected area. And some pathogens are coated in a glycoprotein that the body naturally produces, thereby tricking the body that it's not an invader. Yeah. And some pathogens can not only survive, but they can replicate inside the phagocyte, which I think is a very likely case, and we'll discuss when in a future episode. So this concludes episode four of Pathophysiology of Living Dead. Leave any questions or comments below, either on YouTube or the blog. Feedback is always welcome, and I try to respond to all of it. As always, thank you for watching, and remember to stay spooky. This program is a proud member of the Penny Cult family. For more information, click on the penny or visit www.pennycult.com.